In May of 2022, a gunman entered a grocery store in Buffalo, New York, taking the lives of 10 people. It was a tragedy that forever changed that community and brought the realities of racism and redlining front and center. It's been one year since nurse Trinetta Alston held the hands of survivors of the Topps Grocery Store Massacre. Today, she's still holding hands. I still check in with them like three to four times a week. They call me. They still know they have 24-7 access to me. In the immediate aftermath of that racist attack that took the lives of 10 black residents, the need for more black health care professionals like Austin, Dr. Kenyani Davis and Dr. Levon Ansari was evident, with residents hesitant to open up. Some of them who originally said that they were fine have actually spoke out. And, and said they're actually not fine. You know, anxieties are setting in for them right now with the anniversary coming up. According to the Gun Violence Archive, since that shooting in Buffalo, there have been more than 650 mass shootings across the U.S. From a healthcare perspective, professionals say it's a frustrating reality. The, the city of Buffalo and after 514, literally what, one month later was Uvalde? They, they hadn't even got out of their trauma yet. It truly is a public health concern, and any public health concern is a medical concern. Um, and we still are not able to address this. According to the Anti-Defamation League, in 2022, 21 of 25 domestic extremist-related murders were linked to white supremacists. Nearly half of those murders happened that day in Buffalo, with the shooter admitting to killing the victims because they were Black something especially traumatizing for residents and Black first responders, who Ansari says were often forgotten after the tragedy. The Black police officers, the firemen, all of them are strongly impacted, but they're not getting the same help as the rest. So we got to make sure that we take care of them. In March, New York Governor Kathy Hochul announced $2.5 million in state funding. This plus millions more in federal dollars will go to mental health leaders in order to operate the Buffalo United Resiliency Center, a place dedicated to meeting the physical and mental health needs of Eastside residents and survivors. We had George Floyd, we had COVID, two blizzards that killed us and slaughtered and massacred in a supermarket. Think about the impact that has had on a community of color all within three years. The tragedy did something else, drawing attention to the deadly consequences of redlining, a Jim Crow era method of systemically pushing black people into certain neighborhoods, making the East Side grocery store the perfect target since it was the only one in the area. Lots of promises have been made to improve the quality of life for residents, but the team here says systemic improvements like adding more stores takes time and real change. God willing, in the next five years, you know, <laughs> Buffalo is in the national news as, you know, one of the best places to live because of its diversity and its way of life. Here in Washington, the president continues to call for federal changes to gun laws, including a ban on assault weapons. That is an uphill battle if they divided Congress. Amber Strong, Scripps News, Washington.